Okay, let's draw a line underneath one. And then draw a line underneath two. Because I want to teach you guys um, this in chunks. And then below four. And then, of course, below seven is the obvious spot. I'm going to give you a pattern on this so we don't need the explanations. All right, number one is basically a review. Central angle is always equal to the arc. So let's write out the central angle is always equivalent to the arc. So that means if I know the arc is X, angle one is also X. For number two, it's a little bit different. Is that a central angle? No. Okay, let's go to highlight the two chords. So here's chord one, here's chord two. And also highlight the inner, um, inscribed or intercepted arc. And then I want you to put a dot at the intersection. Same thing on the other, chord AB and chord BC in the inscribed arc, intercepted arc, I mean. Put a dot. And then we have angle three in the intercepted arc. So let's analyze the difference between these two. <coughs> First of all, did, did we do some with number three and four last time? If I have the inscribed angle, the intercepted arc is going to create either half or double. So in this case, we're going to write measurement of angle three is equal to, is the angle going to be half or double the arc? Double. The angle will be doubled? No, the arc is double the angle, so therefore the angle is half of the arc. So that formula is going to go for both of them. But then on number two, because I have the angle in the inside and it's not the central angle, you must take the average of them. So let's write measure of angle one is equal to arc X plus arc Y divided by how many arcs have I added? So it's basically the average between those two. So inside you take the average. If it's on, you take half. Now let's see what happens when it's on the outside. So here I have the secant and tangent and the intercepted arc. Same thing with the next two images. I have two secants and my intercepted arc. The third one is kind of unique. We have two tangents with the intercepted arcs. Okay, let's start by putting a big star on number seven. So let's see what's happening then. If the angle is in the inside, we added them and divided by two. What do you think I might do if the angle is on the outside? What operation? You subtract, you subtract them, very good. So we have, for all of these, measure of angle four, is equal to, it's gonna be the large minus small. Which letter is on the large? Y. y, arc Y minus the arc X divided by two. One thing that I want you to write on number seven on the bottom, you have to use 360 degrees to find one of the angle as long as the other one's given because it's hitting at one point meaning whatever angle measurement the y that I give you to find the x, you take 360 minus that or vice versa. Are we good with that piece? Now go to your foldable. On your foldable, I want you to turn to the first page. And when you fold it upward, you should ideally, unless I messed up, see in, out, and on. Basically easy way to remember. If the angle is inside, you add. If it's on the outside, you subtract. If it is on, it's half of it. Okay, do we all see that? Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and use our same highlighter on the first one and do an actual example. The intercepted arc is going to be these two. 
It's not the other one because this X is on the right side, so I need that piece. And then the opposite. So because it's in the inside, are we going to add, subtract, or half it? Add. So we have measure of the angle X is equal to, we have 106 plus 174 divided by 2. Can we do 106 and 174 in our head? 280. And what is 280 divided by 2? 140. Boom. Okay, let's highlight the next two. I'm going to do it at the same time. Here's the other. And then my intercepted arcs. Boop. And I want you to put on here, this is a point of tangency here. The other two point of tangencies, even though it looks like it's going through, it should be point of tangency. So my angle is on the outside. So are we going to add or subtract it? We're going to subtract. So let's put angle 72, measure of the angle 72 is equal to, it's always angle is equal to, the bigger arc 200, Minus the unknown x divided by 2. I should really just put 72 degrees on there. Same thing. What is 2 times 72? 144. Did I have 200 minus x? What about when I subtract 200 on both sides? Negative 56 is equal to negative x. And now when I make the x positive, what is that angle measurement? 56. Mm -hmm. It's basically like multiplying by negative 1 on both sides or dividing by negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and box that piece. Okay, for the, for the next piece, since I have point of tangencies for that one big circle, could I find the major arc? Yeah. We could do 360 minus what? 92. Mm -hmm. It should be 92. I think it's 92. Yes. Let's do 360 minus 92 off on the side. Although I see it as 260 plus 8. Anyone see that as 260 plus 8 maybe? Mm-hmm, 268. Nope, oh, I wrote 260. Should be 8. So let's go ahead and find out. We have measure of the angle X. It's always the angle is equal to, not the arc is equal to. Our larger arc minus our smaller arc divided by 2. Let's do 268 minus 92 somewhere you have room. One something. Correct. And then when I have 176, it'll be how many? 80. 88. So again, if it's in the inside, you add and divide it by 2. If it's on the outside, you subtract and divide it by 2. Okay? So then let's go on to the next one. Let's highlight both at the same time. Here's our inscribed angle, meaning the vertex is on the circle. And then let's go ahead and look at our intercepted arc. And, and let's put a big dot at the angle because it's all about that vertex. So if that angle is 86, the arc has to be half or double. Has to be double. So when I double 86, the arc X has to be how many? 172. Very good. Okay, um, same rule applies for the next one. Even though I have that point of tangency, it doesn't matter. As long as your vertex is on the circle, it'll be half of the arc. So in this case, you have two options. Clearly, I can't equate them together, right? So I can double the 5x and equate that to 9x plus 20, or half the arc and equate it to the 5x. Which one is user-friendly? 
double the angle. Otherwise, I'm working with 4.5. So let's double the angle, which is 10x, is then equal to the arc, 9x plus 20. And this one seems like a one go, minus 9x on both sides. So x must be how many? 20. Ooh, x equals. It says to find the angle. So the angle is this guy right here, right? How many would that be? I think I heard it. 100. If I ask you to find the arc, it'll be how many then? 200. Could we check on that by plugging the 20 into the arc as well? For sure. Okay? But if you feel confident, you don't have to.